Good evening, doctors and all participants. I'm Dr. Rizin Kusok, the Secretary of Association of Private Practitioners Sabah, APS. Welcome to our free live streaming webinar again, brought to you by APS. And during the session, if you have any question, please write them down on the comment section in the YouTube platform. Uh, please don't wait until the end because some question might not have enough time to be seen by us. So whenever you have question popping up your head about this topic, please write them down and the speaker will address it at the end of the session. Our speaker this evening is Dr. Suma Sundaram Singaram. Dr. Suma or Mr. Suma graduated from Madras Medical College in 1988 and obtained his fellowship in 1996 and completed urology subspecialty in 2000. Mr. Soma worked in Queen Elizabeth Hospital since 1993 before joining private hospital in 2001. He has special interest in indoor urology, which he will be explaining to us later on. He has attended and given lots of talks about urology in various forum. Dr. Soma is now the consultant urologist in KPJ Sabah Specialist Center, Kota Kinabalu. The topic he'll be delivering today is what is new in prostate cancer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Soma. Can start? Hi. Good evening to everybody. Uh, thanks to RISCO for the kind in intro. Uh, thanks to the Association of uh, Private Practitioners of Sabah, KPG Sabah Specialist Hospital, Canon, for organizing this CME talk. The topic given to me was advances in prostate cancer. But before we go advances in prostate cancer, I thought we talk about prostate cancer in the first place. Uh, how how a, a family practitioner or a general practitioner can see what the prostate cancer. Then later we tell you what I will tell you what is the advances. Okay, so without further ado, let me start this talk. So it's the topic is reason advances in prostate cancer. I'm a urologist working in KPJ Sabah Specialist Hospital, formerly called SMC for the last 20 years. I've seen a lot of patients and the prostate cancer management has changed slowly over time. When I first, when I was first doing urology in GHKL and in the UK, the management of prostate cancer was very simple. You do take out the testicles or ablate the hormone androgen ablation, then Nothing much. After that, nothing much, you know. Uh, so it's kind of a short lifespan kind of thing, you know. The patient will ask you, what next doctor? Mm, nothing much that time. Now things have changed and it has become like a chronic disease, you know. In summary, it has become a chronic disease, okay. Just like a diabetes kind of thing, you know. But before that, let's talk about prostate cancer specific, you know. So if somebody's got a, let's say somebody's got a prostate cancer, like say 50 years or 60 years old man. Before he, or anybody, you or me also, let's say, we should know what is going to happen, you know. People think it's like, it's like cancer treatment is like a walk in the park. You go for an operation, you're operated, you're cured, end of story. It doesn't work that way. It's a big topic, you know. So what happen, What happens, we must know, we, even before you start the journey, you must know what is going to happen in the end, you know. If the end is going to be bad, don't even start the journey. That's what that's what I'm trying to tell most patients, you know, I say. But most patients, when the moment they get can the word C cancer, they just go berserk, you know. So that should not happen. You should know what's going to happen, how it's going to change my life. Okay? That's the key thing, you know. So what's going to happen? What can happen? Early prostate. We talk about even before the talk, this this two slides, if you understand, it's more than enough, you know. 
early prostate cancer, say somebody comes to early prostate cancer, okay, it goes for surgery. Early prostate cancer, surgery is our answer. If the surgery is our answer, what can happen? The end outcome. Is there a chance of impotence? There's about 70% chance, I can say, you know, most literatures and most surgeons who operate robotically and all that, they say, oh, impotence is very minimal and so we come back in six months' time. But actually, it's not true. The importance is real. It is real. So, if a 50 years old man goes for robotic surgery, is there a good chance he's going to have importance? And is he going to live with the importance? That is what you must understand. So, the patient should know that number one, you know. And number two, incontinence. Incontinence, not much, you know. It's a slight degree that will, that's not an issue at all. It will improve, you know. Only these two, these two things they should understand for early prostate cancer, a 50 years old man. So they should understand these two things you know, before they even they even think of treatment. Okay, most surgeons will say nothing to worry. Okay, that's one. Now let's talk about advanced or metastatic cancer. Locally advanced, locally advanced metastatic cancer. If somebody comes locally advanced, about sixty years old man, locally advanced, a hard prostate. What is going to happen to him? So end outcome. What you think or I think is going to happen to him? Okay, end outcome. He may have radiotherapy because it's local. It's local like T3 disease. He can have radiotherapy, fine. Then he will have androgen deprivation for two to three years. If it's metastatic, he will have androgen deprivation for the rest of his life. That means his male hormone will be completely blocked, i.e. by injection or by removing the testicles. Okay, that's going to happen. So, and then you know if you remove the testicles of a man, what's going to happen? That's one. Then, if that's not responding, he'll have more second line hormone treatment. Then, he'll have chemo. Then, he will have palliative. Then, what will happen? The cost, the time, the side effect. Those are the ones, these all can and will happen for a locally advanced or metastatic cancer. So, all these things, the patient understands, very good. Very, very good. Then, we start. Okay. Now, once you understood that part of it, there is a basic thing, what can happen if you treat a person, okay. Now, let us come to how to make a diagnosis in the first place, you know, first early and late prostate cancer, all that, how to make a diagnosis, that's very, very important, you know. We are, we are talking about how to treat as efficient as possible, okay. How to diagnose, let's talk about diagnosis, you know. A patient walks to a clinic, 40 years. 50 years, what are you going to do? I mean, if you, if you talk about prostate cancer, the only way to diagnose early prostate cancer is by screening, PSA. PSA is a good test, blood test. You do a blood test, most of the, most of the time, 90% of the time, you get the answer, you know, whether to proceed further or not. Just like a lady goes to the gynecologist or surgeon, gets a mammogram to find out early breast Cancer. Same thing, screening, screening, screening. Of course, let's talk about screening. Is it advisable to do or do PSA or don't do PSA? That is a big, big topic. Do or don't do. You can talk till the cows come home. Uh, some say do, some say don't do. Um, I just do it for everybody. You know, it's just difficult to explain the question. No? I just do it for everybody. But don't do less than 15. Uh, don't do, sorry, 50, 5, 0. Don't do for a 20 years. Please don't do for a 20 years old guy. You know, I've seen a lot of sometimes the just like a package they check a PSA for 20 years old patient. You know. Well, that is a disaster. You know, disaster if you do a PSA for a 20 years old and suddenly becomes slightly abnormal, then insurance won't cover. The mother will be worried. This and that. You know. So PSA screening for anybody who and above that will give you a rough indicator whether he's got a prostate cancer or not. Rough 90 percent, I would say. Then. That is for screening. But the patients you suspect, suddenly it's like 60, 70, 80 years old man comes, you might suspect you have prostate cancer. How? How are you going to suspect? Okay, one. If somebody's got a bone pain, persistent bone pain, you should think of prostate cancer. Maybe prostate cancer has gone to the bone. Okay, that is number one. Then somebody's got hematuria, say like 60, 70 years old man, got hematuria, 50 years old man, hematuria. Well, could it be a prostate cancer? Maturia can be anything from the kidney to the bladder to the ureter. But is it is it a prostate cancer? Yes, you can do a PSA and a rectal examination. Okay, somebody is unwell, non-specific unwell. No, we don't know whether it's got prostate 
any it could be anything but no point no harm in doing a PSA and ruling out prostate cancer somebody's got you do you got a bedside ultrasound in the clinic and you do a bedside ultrasound the hydronephrosis of kidney kidney so is uh, maybe it's something blocking down there could it be a prostate cancer maybe no harm doing a PSA and rectal examination okay somebody's got an erectile dysfunction or oh, a recent onset could say for no reason or uh, slowly going down for the last six months maybe no harm no harm those are the ones can give you some idea you know or oh, somebody's got a uh, in my clinic anybody comes with a PPS symptoms you know urinary frequency and all that I always do add a PSA on top of that it could be it could be a, one of the reasons you know so those are the ones so that's how is if you do this simple test uh, you can get away you can sorry you can understand you can catch 90 percent of the of the pro problematic patients you know that's what I'm trying to tell you okay so far it's clear we go to the next slide can hear I might be a bit fast because that's my nature then how okay let me let's talk about now you have already you got suspect you could you are suspecting somebody's got prostate cancer and you've done a PSA okay PSA is number one number one PSA fine 50 and above please not for young people no just sometimes we have packages and they do a PSA for young people that is a total total disaster you know and the mother asks you I've had patients mother ask for 20 years ago come and do PSA just say no 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 that's all I understood okay so okay now we have PSA how how sensitive it's about 90 percent sensitive and predictable you know so so we are trying to PSA is very very important you know because you are treating the patient who produces PSA there are 10 percent of the group of patients who don't produce PSA they are in trouble because when you come to a clinic and you do a PSA it's normal you say okay normal do a rectal examination normal then you send them off and say okay but five years down the line he comes still with a low PSA but then this time you do a rectal examination is hard so that means you got prostate cancer these are a small group of patients I mean you can't do anything nobody can do anything you know they just come with advanced cancer because they don't produce PSA in the first place you know so that one we can't do much you know that a small group of cancer of prostate don't produce PSA that is difficult so we are not talking about the 10 percent we are talking about the 90 percent of people which we can treat reasonably so the 10 percent which we can't treat too bad we can't do anything about it we can't uh, suddenly do a because the early cancer prostate which T1 is inside it's smooth you can't feel anything the PSA is normal so you, you're not going to order an MRI or know CT scan or something like that you know so 10 percent too bad we can't do we have to be realistic you know, we can't treat everybody we can't treat 100 percent you know? so PSA is a fairly fairly good test but coming back to PSA again I see a lot of practitioners they order free PSA free PSA is difficult to interpret you know I don't do free PSA for everybody A is difficult to interpret B is expensive it's about 100 bucks if I'm not mistaken C it doesn't do anything any good for the patient I do P free PSA when I've done a biopsy and I can't get the answers negative and they come back with slightly higher PSA I'm not sure because he won't agree for the next biopsy you know so to to do something I don't know the next biopsy then I do a free PSA and the PSA that, that's all so sometimes I see a lot of practitioners they just order free PSA as a one shot together I think it's not that worthwhile uh, try not try just to stick to plain PSAs more than more than now. Okay, I'm not saying don't do, but it's it's going to make it complicated. PSA you do one, then you treat the patient with alpha blockers, then do a PSA in three months time. If it's higher, then send to the urologist. If it's gone down, that's the end of story. Okay, alpha blockers PSA is high. I normally if the PSA is high plus the patient comes to me, I give him alpha blockers because. Suddenly you jump and do a biopsy on the patient, you won't, you won't, I mean, you think this doctor is like rush, rush, you know, want to do things, you know. So I give them one month medication, settle. Of course, if the rectal examination is hard, prostate, then I do a biopsy straight away. If it's not hard, I give them medicine, let them go home, think, Google, talk, understand, come back one month later. No hurry. Because prostate cancer is not going to kill a person tomorrow, you know. 
so no no harm in waiting one month you know so patient also understand okay la the doctor gave medicine got to get antibiotic still going up i got no choice then i want to biopsy okay okay so they they that kind of come into terms okay so that's about psa so again psa normal psa is alone enough no need three psa okay uh, now examination how are we going to examine simple simple examination not a big like you know cardiac exam you know uh, simple simple examination general examination good to see general examination uh, make sure we don't getting into other trauma it doesn't have other problem you know um, then bedside i mean i have a bedside ultrasound i'm sure most clinic nowadays have a bedside ultrasound you can do a ultrasound of the kidney and the bladder and the more you do the better you become uh, if there's hydronephrosis then you worry it's a big prostate a small prostate and a small prostate the small prostate and a high psa also a bit of like a warning sign you know somebody's got a big prostate 100 gram gland and you got a psa of age of 10 that's fine but somebody's got a 20 10 30 gram prostate then he's got a psa of 10 or 12 oh, small prostate high psa something doesn't tally you know big prostate high psa tally small prostate high psa doesn't tally you know so something like that Uh, then you do a rectal examination i've listened to talks from other urologists they say no need to do rectal examination if you're going to send to a urologist that's fine say for example somebody is in kk and they want to send to a urologist then you don't want to do a rectal examination on a person that's fine but somebody is in kunak or sandakan or kedabatangan you know the patient relies on you very much you know so i think it is it is it is necessary for you to do a rectal examination on that gentleman and See whether the prostate hard because then you can reassure him or tell him convincingly that you got a big prostate, you got a hard prostate, and PSA is high. You better go and see a urologist. So, if you are in a small town, I think you should do. If you are in KK and if you don't want to do, that's fine. So, rectal examination, I think uh, everybody should do. Okay, uh, depending on where you are. A basic blood test. I normally do a, a blood test which includes a liver function test. to see the alkaline phosphatase is high or not and the psa those are the key things i see all the time you know psa alkaline phosphatase of course the nowadays all the blood tests will have creatinine hemoglobin all this additional information creatinine is additional information hemoglobin is addition but mainly lft seeing the alkaline phosphatase and the psa okay so so we done a simple examination Okay, we now we suspect uh, somebody has got a cancer of the prostate. So now what? This is recent advances. Now we are talking about MRI. Should we do an MRI before the biopsy, or should the now the pictures? You got a patient, a sixty years old man, got a medium uh, equal. I mean, smooth prostate, or maybe hard or smooth, but the PSA is like eight or ten or seven. So you want to. You want to do an MRI before the biopsy, or you want to do after the biopsy. So things are slowly changing now. They call it multi-planar MRI. In the UK, apparently, uh, I will listen to the talk. In the UK, they they say if they do a multi-planar MRI, say a patient got PSA of five or six, or you are suspecting six, they do a multi-planar MRI. If the MRI is just like a B-rad score for the breast cancer, this is called P-I-R-A P-rad score. P I R A D S P R A D S C O R E one to five. Of course, they got different scoring system, you know, different different thing, you know. So if the P R A D S C O R E scoring system is one and two, that means the chance of you having prostate cancer is very very minimal. No biopsy, bye bye. But if it's like four and five, the chance of having cancer is higher. Then you do a biopsy. But in the Malaysian context, are we there? Our our M R I multi Parametric MRI of the prostate reporting by the radiologist is it is it mature or not? We are not really sure that it's not that every hospital can kind of uh, give a good MRI, a multi-parametric MRI to say that I don't want to do a biopsy or M M M R I prostate is like P R I S one and two, so you can go up and come back see me after five years. Um, that's a bit we. I think we are not there yet. You know? We are not there, but we are slowly, slowly moving. I'm sure more radiologists do this course in urology, and they they will confidently say, "Okay, I say no need to do," and I believe you. So the urologists believe the radiologists, and we don't need the biopsy, you know. 
So they are trying to avoid the biopsy. But right now, it's not really, really a, a gold standard whether to do before or after. You know, but people are beginning to do before. Why? So after the, it doesn't give a histology diagnosis. It only says this area. Say, for example, a prostate is like a small walnut. Which area is positive? You know, it says upper lobe is positive. The upper lobe. We zoom in and take more biopsy. That is why it only helps you. It doesn't confirm your cancer or the prostate. You know. It just say where to zoom in and take more biopsy to prevent a repeat biopsy. That's all MRI, okay? But it is it is it is new. It's happening. Some people have it before. Some people have it after. Okay? It's not mandatory. It's not like compulsory. You know, it's not like um, okay. So that's about MRI, multiplanar MRI of the prostate before the biopsy. Okay. Now we have done that. Oh, we got a patient. We got a high slightly high PSA or high PSA. Now what next? Next is biopsy of the prostate. Okay, we must do a biopsy of the prostate to confirm, confirm the histological diagnosis. I mean, without histological diagnosis, there's no treatment. You know, I mean, we can't see, we can't give aga. I mean, assuming we can't give treatment. No? I, I do. I've done assuming treatment for older people. You know, PSA 90 or 80 years old man, then I assume and do But that is older people who generally need a biopsy. You know. Transrectal systematic biopsy is good enough. The old fashioned transrectal. When, when we first started, we used to take three cores in each row, then we moved to six cores. I normally take about 10 to 12 cores in each row, you know, each side, right side and left side, both sides. Okay, I'll show you later, I'll show you a picture of a prostate. Uh, so I do both sides, you know, so I 12 cores. I do 12 cores because I don't want to come back and do a repeat biopsy, you know, and biopsy is not a joy, you know, it's quite, it's called torture, you know, it's a torture, you know, okay. Okay, and then now they talk about recent advances. We are talking recent advances, or this is already there for a while, you know. Transperineal, they say the infection is less, uh, you could get more sample, but that is not the first line. If you, somebody is a young man, we can't get the answer, then only we do this one. A, this transperineal is expensive, you know. It's like A, you need a GA or local, put it in a lithotomy position. Put the template just like a small, like a butterfly, ten, like a small box, like a template, you know, on the perineum, and with ultrasound, do some 20, 30 cores, you know, and it's cost 20k, you know, 20,000 know, just for the biopsy, you know, 10 to 20,000, I think 10,000, I'm not sure, 10 to 20,000, it's expensive. This is only for small, small group, you know, so transrectal is most of the time good enough. I've been doing transrectal for the last. Uh, 20 years and I would say my yield is good. I mean, I uh, probably am. Um, I've not missed anything if I'm mistaken. Maybe one or two. But I do 12 cores each side is very, very good enough already. I think so. Okay. So then now they have the new technique. Every time you have to add on new, you know, MRI, fusion, biopsy, this and that. You know, they do MRI, they do ultrasound, they fuse together and take a biopsy. You know. These are for only a small group which you cannot pick up by, by first transrectal biopsy. Second line, second line, you know. So transrectal is good enough in my transrectal systematic ultrasound biopsy is more than good enough. Okay. So, I mean, how they do is how I do is just 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 like a big transvaginal probe, the same vaginal probe. You put the rectum and scan the prostate and take tap tap uh, automatic gun and take about twelve samples both sides. Give a local injection to the prostate and the prostate numb, you know. And of course, I do a ball prep before the patient comes. I do a ball prep. I give antibiotic, injection antibiotic, I give oral antibiotic, then I do both sides and I give my telephone number in the evening. If you have any fever, anything, you straight away come to the hospital. No, no shopping, no nothing. Straight come to the hospital and if you have slightest fever. I do a biopsy in the morning, I ask the wait in the ward in the clinic, ask them to pee, uh, no blood clot, no retention, then Baru can go home, you know. Uh, so we take and generally okay so far, I would say, you know, okay. Discussion of it. Once you, okay, you've done the biopsy, the patient goes home and comes back after two weeks. Then you do a discuss histology, you know. When you come back, you can ask him the question, do you have blood in the sperm, blood in the urine, blood in the rectum, in the, in the stools, all will settle after a couple of days, after three, four days, you know. So you find, okay, most patients are happy, they come for discussion. And now, when now once you got the biopsy, the report mainly we are talking about. Of course, not all prostate cancer. Some I've had prostate biopsy turned out to be lymphoma. You know, 
and other things tb also have turned out and all so different things can happen but generally we generally we talk about adenocarcinoma of the prostate most of the time is adenocarcinoma of the prostate okay so why this biopsy is important the discussion is important is it because the gleason this is the gleason is so gleason is the the grade of the cancer how fast the cancer is spread i mean like multiplies you know that's that's basically how much how rapidly you know if it's gleason 2 3 4 5 6 it's a slow growing cancer you know so if somebody's got a gleason 6 and he opts to wait i don't know anything i want to wait for a while okay fine because you know we are talking about again the number one slide if you send this guy for a robotic radical prostate he's going to have impotence at 50 years i mean he will be happy with that so you can tell him you got a gleason 5 or 6 or 4 prostate cancer you can wait for a while you know is not going to kill you in next 15 to 15 years or something like that you know so th- those are the one that's that is the histology to discuss you know 2 3 4 5 6 of course you have to watch and carefully observe him uh maybe in a repeat biopsy uh maybe an mri this way mri plays a role mri in all this you have to understand i mean you tell the patient on uh, 2 3 4 5 6 but the mo- again again the moment the patient gets the word c he just goes confused you know was up that's it whatever you sell it doesn't go into the his brain you know he just wow i'm going to die tomorrow you know so but coming back as a medical profession we can put some sense 2 3 4 5 6 is a slow growing cancer you can wait if you want to know how okay 7 8 9 10 this is general guidelines i'm just saying huh? sometimes they they put 7 this side they put 6 this side you know 7 8 9 and 10 is a fast growing cancer or rather aggressive cancer and you need treatment 10 means if somebody comes to a, you do a biopsy and gleason in 10 then are you then it's a bad news you know it's a bad news you know it's a bad news then you know this guy is going to go down the hill a little bit more rapidly than who has got gleason 6 you know so that kind of thing you know 10 7 8 9 10 they need some form of treatment definitely okay because it's going to harm them okay okay now you have discussed histology somebody's got 7 8 9 10 then you tell okay you got 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 gleason prostate cancer this is a total score the gleason is a total score gleason is like like two scores you know 5 plus 5 but i'm just putting you they say 4 plus 3 3 plus 4 if you see report you always say you know 3 plus 4 4 plus 4 5 plus 5 that is but i'm i'm showing you i'm showing the total number the total score not the 5 plus 5 okay the total number okay okay we're talking about 7 8 9 9 and 10 okay a patient is sitting in front of me he's got at least an 8 prostate cancer early now early or late okay before that early or late it doesn't matter if he's got a cancer prostate now what we next step is imaging we need to know whether the cancer or prostate is spread or is not spread the metastatic or not in the medical world is spread or not okay so now what the common thing we all do everybody is bone scan nuclear bone scan you no know? bone scan to see whether it is spread to the bone or not if it is spread to the bone it's a different story if it is not spread to the bone it's it's considered early early okay with the talking about bone scan normally for early like psa is low like 10 no need to bone scan but now patient everybody wants a bone scan no and plus high grade somebody's got a gleason somebody's got a bsa 5 but gleason 10 prostate cancer better do a bone scan because we don't know do a surgery and find is say it's already gone to the bone you know so i think bone scan you can argue but i think everybody needs a bone scan you know if you need treatment okay i would recommend everybody have a bone scan now it but the book says p low psa no need bone scan but most patient won't agree to that you know in the malaysian context might as well do bone scan everybody the bone this is how the bone scan tell you where it's spread you know it's uh, like it gone to the bone if it's gone to the bone then uh, it's not a local disease anymore you know even though psa is low psa can be 10 but it can still go to the bone and spread to the bone you know so it's a metastatic okay Then of course we do a CT scan. Bone scan does not show the soft tissue like lymph nodes, 
the liver, the lung. So you do a CT scan for that, okay? Bone and CT scan. Now you're talking about advances, recent advances. Reason now the current trend is slowly moving. It is it is it's slowly moving. Rather than doing a bone scan and a CT scan two, one by one or two and two, do a PMSA PET set CT scan. PET scan, PMSA. That shows the soft tissue, the bone, and is 30% better than this combined together, you know, it gives you more information. So even you see micro matters all you see before the operation. So this is like, it's like at a crossroads, you know. If you do PMSA PET, then uh, like for example, then you find it's already gone to the lung or the bone or the dole somewhere, which you can't pick up in the bone scan and the CT scan, but you can pick up in the PMSA PET. Then the whole thing changes, you know, then no more robotic, you know. Say somebody's got a very low PSA and you're planning for robotic, the bone scan is negative, the CT scan is normal, you're planning for a robotic. Then suddenly a PMSA says there's a node in there, in the in the rib or in node or rib somewhere, minor thing which you cannot pick up in the in the CT or bone. Then the whole thing changes, you know. So now it's like a crossroad, you know, whether to do or not to do. In Australia, apparently 60% of the urologists do a PMSA, PSMA, PET, CT before anything as a first line, uh, but in Malaysia it's not yet there. In America also split to do or not to do, you know. But slowly things are moving, PSMA, PET will become the first line of imaging before we do anything. It's slowly going to happen, I think so, you know, but now it's crossroads, you know. This is the latest PSMA, PET, okay. This is the one, this is a PSMA, PET, you know, it shows a small node, you know, is got a better pickup than the bone and CT scan. A small node, which you can't do, in which you can't get in CT scan or bone scan. The whole thing changes, you know. But then some people are arguing, are you finding small, unnecessary things and changing the whole treatment because of this? So it, it is still, it is still debating, debatable, I would say. Okay. So you must be aware, PSMA, PET. PET different patch scan, not a one. Last time we had a patch scan, no, last in the initial series the patch scan was not PSMA, just general patch scan. That was not uh, doesn't pick up any prostate cancer. Now it is this is the new new the chemical uh, the agent PSMA. <coughs> it's a different it's not like the old patch scan, you know, this is a new one, you know. Okay. Uh, of course it's not available in Saba, by the way. Now, okay, you got imaging. Now we know it's a local or systemic disease. Okay, it's only 30 minutes away, 11, 5 minutes. Now we're going to treatment for early prostate cancer. Okay, T1, T2, T3. Okay, this is what this is a picture of T1, T2, T3. What is the most of the time the patient end up with? If it's not spread anywhere, with radical prostatectomy. It can be done robotic or open. Robotic is expensive, 60, 70,000 in private practice in private hospitals in KL. Open is done everywhere, but I would say robotic is much, much better. The recovery is faster, the, 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 the visualization is faster. I think uh, robotic will be better, but open is also laparoscopic and also acceptable. Of course, somebody doesn't want operation, they want radiotherapy. Stage for stage, radiotherapy is also good equally good apple to apple whether a t2 t2 operate patient has a robotic prostatectomy or a radiotherapy is equally good uh, it's no no major difference you know i have a lot of patients who have done radiotherapy and still doing good you know okay so robotic even say for example if you look at t3 yeah, he, if somebody does a robotic and the margins are positive you know the margins are positive um, then after operation, then you have to do radiotherapy, you know. So, after radiotherapy, it's not like you do robotic radi robotic radical process, it's the end of story. Then you got to add radiotherapy on top of that. So, it becomes complicated. So, radiotherapy or robotic or open process is about the same outcome. End outcome, T1, T2, T3. T4 is different. T4 is all metastatic, already, then you need something else. So, local treatment, surgery or radiotherapy, that's the end of story, okay. 
then follow up the PSA. If the PSA is going up, then the cancer is coming back. If the PSA is stable at 0 0.01, that means the cancer is not coming back. And simple, simple and easy to follow up PSA, PSA. Metastatic cancer, if the cancer is spread, then it's a different story. Depends on the, now it becomes, now only the latest advance, latest uh, advances in prostate cancer matters, you know. Depends on the health of the patient and also the wealth of the patient. Is he rich or not? Because now it becomes expensive. Block the male hormone one by giving an injection every three monthly or six monthly. That in the private practice costs about 1000, 1300 ringgit every three monthly injection, you know. Three monthly got 1300 ringgit for the rest of the life. Or take off the testicle, both the testicle, bilateral, orchiectomy, the old fashioned treatment is still considered very good and cheap. Okay. Block the male hormone. Then if you think, if you think it's, if, I mean, we think it's local, it's local, it's just around the prostate and the nodes around, it's not spread anywhere. Then we can also add on radiotherapy, radiotherapy to the prostate and to the nodes. People have done well. Now they have the new term called, uh, what is it? Uh, oligometastasis, that means minimal metastasis, like one or two areas in the bone is spread. They radiate, they radiate that two areas also, you know. Say for example, it's gone to the humerus or to the rib. They radiate the rib a little bit and the bone and the humerus. Three spots, you know. So the prostate radiotherapy, then to the bone, one or two areas or three areas, you know, oligomets also can radiate. They, that's the new, that's the current thing, you know. So radiate and kill all the cancer cells as much as possible with the hormone, okay. Then after that, still the PSA is going up after this, all this thing. When you do the first line treatment of radiotherapy and hormone, the PSA will stay stable for about three years, you know, three to four years easily it will stay stable. Then only it will go up. Once it goes up, then people add chemotherapy. Then if chemotherapy is going up, then in spite of chemotherapy is going up, Chemotherapy is basically the docetaxel kind of chemotherapy. Uh, whether it does good or not, in my experience, I uh, in a hospital, uh, I don't see any earth shattering results with the chemo so far in our hospital, you know, okay. I, I suspect it's going to be the same in other hospitals also, you know. Then if the chemotherapy is not working, then you give the second line ADT. This is the new drug which is the market for the last four, five years, maybe seven years. It started with abitron acetate, enzalutamide, then apalutamide. These are new drugs, you know, which the drug, you know, it costs about five to 10,000 ringgit a month. And you will see for the rest of your life. So if a patient is living for five years, let's say, uh, every month, five to 10,000 bucks, depending on the medicine you're buying, you know, 5,000 a month, every month for the next, uh, 12 months time, uh, 60 months, that's a lot of money. So that is the new drug. Of course, now they got the generic version, it's a bit cheaper, uh, but still it's not very cheap and it's about three to, th three to 5,000 generic version, okay, second line. And now what happened? The new treatment, is, if you ask for the new management, they add this all upfront. And the patient comes, first time you still give radiotherapy, chemotherapy, ADT, everything together one shot, okay. Then that's it. Give everything up front. Then of course, these are all debatable. Huh? Then withdraw the medication and wait for a while. The PSA, PSA every time the, the follow-up is PSA. The PSA is going down and not going up. Then you got palliative, okay? Palliative is the last one. So then of course the new new medication. More medicines are coming soon, you know. Uh, systemic radiotherapy. You just give the radi radiotherapy into the bloodstream. It'll go and target and zzz, like a like a you know like a like a nuclear bomb. Boom! It'll go search for the cancer cell and kill. It's called lutetium uh, radiotherapy, R two two three, and all the kind of thing. Uh, systemic radiotherapy and more more drugs are coming. So it's becoming going to become a prostate cancer. It's going to become chronic disease. It's going to be expensive treatment. Got to repeat to visit the doctor. Side effects and this is uh, so. People can live easily about 10 to 15 years. Uh, in my in my simple opinion, maybe you have to sell a CBD to stay alive. So I would like to thank uh, again. This is my end of talk. Huh? This is the uh, overall view of prostate cancer.
is treatable, expensive, multimodality. Whether to start all treatment in one shot, in upfront, nowadays the new word is upfront. Give it upfront. Everything give it upfront, you know. You have to wait and see whether upfront is, is, the, is the gold standard or not. Okay. I would again like to thank uh, this school, uh, APP, Association of Private Practice of Sabah, and uh, in fact, I would also thank the uh, Kodama Polyclinic for <laughs> lending this space, you know, and uh, KPC Sabah and Canon. Thank you very much. Any questions, I will take from now. Thank you, Dr. Sama, for that uh, very interesting topic. Thank you again. Um, Dr. Sama now will address the question in the YouTube chat platform. There's a question here. There's one question here from iMedic. I read it here. If a patient around the age of 50 years old has high PSA and found to have BPH, minimal symptoms, how often would you recommend follow-up examination and investigation? Annually? Well, if it's got a high PSA, you can't say BPH. You know, you can't say BPH. You can high BPH does not produce high BPH. Uh, if you got high BPH, he needs a he needs a biopsy. He needs a biopsy. You know? If the PSA is normal and you think it's a BPH, then fine, you, you, don't need, you can see once a year. For example, a patient comes to me 50 years, I do a PSA, it's normal and he's got BPH symptoms like frequency and all that. Then I give him alpha blockers, then ask him to come and see me after one year. Uh, and one year I do the PSA, you know. Uh, but if the PSA is high, high means then uh, he, should, he, he, should, he needs a biopsy. You know? If 50 years, a high PSA, he needs to see a urologist or... And uh, and need a biopsy, you know. You can't you can't sit on it. You know. you can't sit on it. Yep. BPH and PSA is not connected at all. It doesn't mean uh, if he's got if he's got a BPH. I mean, like he's got low in tract symptoms. You know, the PSA should be normal. It should not be high. You know. it's, it should not be high. This man needs a biopsy if it's high. It depends on how high it is. Uh, slightly high. Then give alpha blockers, then it will come down. If it comes down, then no need to worry about it. See, I have the annually. Thank you, Mr. Soma. Um, we don't have any question at the moment, but uh, we're still uh, uh, waiting here. Um, I have my own question oh. uh, regarding the uh, risk factor for prostate cancer. I think um, one of the topics that I'm interested in is uh, family history of uh, prostate cancer. Okay. Would you do the uh, PSA earlier for those people? Who yes, are... yes, yes. I, I tell them if I see a young man in my clinic, you know, uh, I tell them, you know, I tell the uh, boys, you know, uh, the sons, you know, you guys are better do a PSA or not. 50, la, I would say 50, you know, uh, 40, maybe I'm not sure, but I would say 50, you know, do 50, 45 also can do. Depends. If the father gets prostate cancer younger, then the children have to do a bit earlier. If the father gets a prostate cancer when he's 80, then the children can do a bit later, you know. So, uh, I depend, if I see a 50 years old man with prostate cancer, I tell the sons, I, you guys, all of you, be a bit careful, you know. Uh, you do a PSA, maybe earlier 40, you know. Uh, family history, I definitely recommend them to do. That is one reason they must do, they must do. But how early, I'm not sure. I think 40, 45 should be fine. Okay, and the other things I would like to ask is the, uh, from your experience, what is the uh, prognosis of uh, most of these patients who comes to your place? They, they, average. They do well. You know, I would say they do well for 10 to 15, 10 years. They do well. You know, 10, years. 10 years. And again, we shouldn't all group together. If the high, the Gleason 10, then they do, don't do well. The Gleason in seven, six, or eight, uh, they do quite well for ten to ten years plus. They do well. Providing, provided that they have, the they have to follow up. They have to follow up. They have to follow the treatment. No, they have to take injection, uh, follow up, radiotherapy, uh, calcium. I mean, uh, yeah, they do really okay. No? They do okay. All right. I only a small group they go down very fast, you know. Mm -hmm. But most of them they do well. They obviously they do okay. Uh, but now the good thing is the the newer the, the second line androgen blocking drug 
the new androgen blocker, they call novel androgen blocker, new drug lab. Mm-hmm. It's becoming a bit cheaper. You can get generic one. It's a bit cheaper. So I was even told the Cancer Society in KL gives them for 1,100 a month, it seems. You know. So it's a bit cheaper from 10,000. No? Yeah. 10,000 a month to 1,500 a month. Mm-hmm. It's a bit cheaper. Um, is it tolerated to him, this uh, androgen? Again, it doesn't work 100% on everybody, you know, it's, uh, it works only a 70%, mm-hmm. not 100% okay. and uh, most people can take it, you know. Uh, is, uh, wouldn't say it's tolerated well, there are side effects also, uh, some people can take it sometimes. Sure. Okay, we haven't got any question yet in, in my uh, YouTube. <laughs> but I think radiotherapy also is good for process because if you go to the surgeon, they say robotic. Mm-hmm. If you go to the oncologist, they say, they say radiotherapy. But if you ask me, both are equally okay. No? Both are, I'm a surgeon, but I don't know robot. Maybe if I have a robot here, then I'll say robotic. Okay. <laughs> and I think my last question, out of uh, my own personal interest, like I've heard this uh, from friend, GP friend as well. That now they have this treatment for prostate cancer where they actually inserted something radioactive. Yes, yes, prostate. yes, yes. Yeah. It is there before also. It is yeah. there before also. Radium, is yeah. radium needle implant you can put in the prostate. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a, it's a cumbersome treatment, you know. You, it's a please lie. It's a really, okay. really. I have a patient go to China and get it done and come back here. Yeah. Oh my God. It's a so, nuisance, you know. It's a nuisance. It's patchy, patchy. It burns patchy, patchy. Then you got stricture. Then you can't put a scope. Then you can't do anything, you know. So, so it's, it's not a, really. Uh, no, no, it's <laughs> not. A, it's it's a, it. When it came, it was like the big thing, you know. But I don't think so. Uh, for that, you just go for external beam radiotherapy. It's much, much better. Uh, it's like hundred times better. Yeah, I think I think the person who was talking about it also referring to a guy from uh, China. Yeah, I've had patients who come to China. Uh, they've given that and they give the lead gown, and the guy should wear the lead gown. So that the radium, the thing doesn't go and affect other people. But they'll be having the red gown at home, you know. So as well as red gown, oh, red gown, I forgot to bring, you know. Actually, the red gown, they should wear like a skirt, like a, like a Scottish skirt they would wear, you know. But uh, it's quite, quite powerful, the uh, uh, exactly. so, radiation. Uh, they go, they're lucky. Now, because of COVID, there's no fight, they didn't go to China. Others, they go to China and get it done. In Malaysia, I think it's not done. Uh, right. Radium needle implant. Radium needle implant. implant. They put pellets in it came, but with the robotic, uh, robotic is fantastically good. Yeah, really but robotic better. is super, super good. Okay. Robotic is good. Uh, worst come to worst, a normal external beam radiotherapy in KBJ, now the, the new machines is equally good. You know. oh. uh, it's very good. You don't need to wear the lead count, no need to run around with the skirts and all that. It's just simple. Seven weeks of radiotherapy is absolutely good. Okay. Mm. All right, now we have got two questions from Dr. Ahmad. With the advances of treatment of prostate cancer, what's the survival rate? I think you already answered yeah. that, but you, you can... Yeah, I can add. say. It's quite good. You know, people can live longer. People, uh, the more medicine, it's just like a chronic disease, like a chronic diabetes, you know, 10 to 15 years. You can buy time and now there are more and more new drugs. I think it's what they're trying to say is it's going to become like a chronic disease, like, you know, like a SLE or something like that. You know. But the bottom line is it's going to be expensive. Government is also, you can get it in government also. They are they are trying to do as much as possible, but I think eventually it's going to get expensive. But then the generic will come into the market and become a little bit cheaper. All right. From Dr. Elvin Chong, any role in herbal therapy? Uh, I have no idea, sir. I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> it's not really your scope. <laughs> From Dr. Ahmad again, how to do the staging of prostate cancer first uh, number one is uh, of course rectal examination after that you need a PET scan P- PS- PSMA PET or a bone and CT combined together that will give you the stage bone and CT will get, tell you spread or not it's T4 or not but locally CT scan or MR of the prostate will tell you within local it's within the prostate or gone outside the prostate MRI will also give you a good idea if you're talking only of prostate if you do MRI, multi-parametric MRI, you know if you do, you know, you know it's gone outside the prostate or it's inside the prostate. It's gone outside the prostate, it's T3, T4. It's inside the prostate, T1. Then add, if whether it's within the prostate or outside the prostate, you still have a bone scan to show that it's gone to the bone or not. 
if it's gone to the bone, it's a, it's a, it advanced. If it's within the prostate, it's, it's not gone to the bone. It's within the prostate T1, D2. So you know. So what you need is MRI of the prostate, CT scan, bone scan, or minus cut all things short, PSMA, PET scan. That will tell you where before you start the treatment, whether it is local or advanced. All because right. the whole game plan is different, you know. Local is different treatment, advanced different treatment. Mm -hmm. Next one. I think um, I would like to add there also. Uh, can you actually translate Gleason score to staging? You know, no, 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 no. Okay. Gleason is Gleason is only to tell how aggressive the cells are. Gleason and staging is uh, if you have Gleason ten does not mean you have T four. You can still have T one. I see. So uh, you can still have T one. Then you can have Gleason ten. Sure. Uh, you can have Gleason seven, and you can still have T four gone to the bone to the skull. Exactly. So, All right. I always tell my patient that Gleason is like a gear of the car, you know, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like, you know, like 4, 10 is like 4 or 5. You know. Okay. All right. Next is from Dr. Um, Pama. Can Velocity. you pre can you predict risk of cancer developing on the velocity increase in the PSA level <laughs> over a period? I, was, I don't do PSA velocity and all that. It's, PSA velocity, PSA density, all that is just a day. I just simply do a plain PSA, uh, PSA, and give alpha blockers. After that one month, come again do a PSA. It's gone up depending on the age of the patient. I do a biopsy. If they don't want a biopsy, if the patient is very, uh, like you know, very knowledgeable or fussy or something like that, I do a multi-parametric MRI of the prostate. That will give you P as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If it says 1 and 2, then I say, okay, nothing to worry, leave alone. So I don't do P. Nowadays, uh, most of us also don't follow PSA velocity, PSA density. Straight away, we do a multi parametric MRI of the prostate if somebody doesn't want a biopsy. You know. That also gives a good idea. And it's not cheap, it's about two to 3,000 ringgit MRI, multi parametric MRI of the prostate. Not the normal MRI of the prostate, you know. If this is a different MRI, you know. You need more sequence. Okay. So, so basically, don't wait. Once it's elevated, it's uh, not if you elevate it, don't you do, do a biopsy. Uh, no, no. <laughs> but if it's slowly going up, say, for example, four or five, four or five, you want to wait for a while. You're a young man, 50 years, you know, whatever about sex life. Then you want to wait. You can, can wait. But if you, if you can't sleep, then do MRI, multi parametric MRI of the prostate. Sure. Yeah. All right. Next question from Dr. Ahmad again. New treatment, do it. Does it give any added value to conventional treatment of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and hormonal therapy? No, no, no. The basic treatment is basic treatment is always basic. Normal hormone therapy, radiotherapy. That's all. That is a basic hormone. Block the hormone and give radiotherapy if it's local. That is that is basic basic. Huh? Chemo sometimes the PSA is going up. Then only add chemo. Then, of course, if all are not working and the PSA is still going up and the patient comes and sits in front of you, doctor, my PSA is going up, what do you want me to do next? Then we have to add the new drug, huh? the enzalutamide, the abiatron, the apalutamide. But, so, then they give you extra life, an extra few months, few months, few months, few months. But if you ask me, all these are working uh, really, really not. Uh, the book says, it, it uh, literature says it is helping to prolong the life, you know. That's all. So it does it it does prolong the life, right? It does prolong the life a bit, you know. All right. We it does a... prolong the life, uh, but is it earth shattering? I'm not sure about that. Okay. Okay, we have uh, finished addressing the question. Hang on, there's one more coming, Doctor Julian. I think we will still have time to answer that one. Uh, Can biopsy cause possible spread of the cancer? No, oh, I don't think so. No, I, this is a, everybody asks the same question. Uh, I don't think so. But if you don't want to do biopsy, then what do you want to do? How to confirm the cancer? Um, this is like a Chinese belief. I remember when I was first joined in the, the urology department in Queen, when I came back and joined the Queen, I did a cancer penis groin node biopsy, you know. Groin is already swollen in big, big nodes there. I did a biopsy of groin and after that, the the groin node ruptured and became big, you know, wow, the whole family came after me, you know, because you took the biopsy that is just like a white hand, you disturb the mount, the hand run away everywhere and uh, can, I don't think so, it worked that way, you know. Uh, I had a big fight with the family, you know, 
they say i sp- made the cancer spread and i <laughs> killed the patient you know <laughs> so i don't think so um uh, biopsy will spread the cancer but uh, do we have any choice or we don't have any choice also we still have to do a biopsy exactly all right again thank you um, dr soma um before we end this session today do you have any last parting words from for uh, our hmm. viewers i think oh, yeah. i hope all, all of us don't get prostate cancer <laughs> so uh, it's it's a, it's a torture uh, but it's treatable it's treatable uh, um, as a doctors we all doctors must do i mean do a psa but you think before you do a psa what do you want if you if the, if the psa is uh, all of us and all men uh, i would suggest if you in a, in a practice uh, 15 and above do a psa um then tell them it can be then go see a doctor then take it from there now uh but before you send the doctor you tell him all this a possibility you know and uh, it should be a combined discussion with a family and a wife uh, together you know uh before they start the journey you know because the journey can be a long windy journey and can be expensive and are they ready for that okay but uh, having in the malaysian context Uh, I've never seen a patient so far come and say, "Doctor, let me don't do anything. Let me go." You know, I've never seen a patient so far. You know, they always want to do something this and that. You know, uh, so I think we are we are stuck between business, medical practice, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's become a big cocktail. You know, uh, do or don't do. We don't do also. We get screwed. We do also. We get screwed. So in the summary, just do the PSA, then uh, from there take it from there. Thank That's you. what I can say. You know. All right. Okay, we'll, we we um, arrive at the end of the session. Thank you again, Dr. Soma. Thank you for all the participating doctors. Now we're gonna be showing the scan, the QR code for you to scan for your CPD point. If you have uh, trouble uh, scanning the CPD point, the QR code, I mean, please register your name at the link given earlier in this uh, chat group. I want to thank you, uh, our secretariat, Miss Melissa and Mr. Adrian, again for their assistance. Thank you to our sponsor, KPJ Sava, and also Canon Medical. We will see you again in two weeks' time. Thank you and take care.